It's that time of the year again and we have a brand new Ubuntu that's rolling out with a punch. Ubuntu 23.04 Lunar Lobster is the newest version of the world's most popular Linux distro and it's bringing a ton of new things and exciting improvements. We get a whole new installer which is the official first step for Ubuntu in a new direction into the future. We get a new GNOME with much awaited improvements throughout. Improvements in the Files app, Settings app and a whole new kernel. Yes sir, Ubuntu 23.04 is absolutely loaded. Ubuntu interim releases are always exciting as they come with many interesting things. Ubuntu developers try out new things in interim releases before they finally make their way into the long term versions. And this version of Ubuntu definitely packs a punch. So let's jump right in and have a look at what's new, what's improved and what's impressive in the all new Ubuntu 23.04 Lunar Lobster. One of the biggest changes that you'll notice early on is a brand new Ubuntu installer. After years and years of using the legendary Ubiquiti installer, we get a new installer that is built using the Flutter framework. Now Ubuntu had announced the adoption of Flutter as the default choice of framework for building all Ubuntu apps henceforward. This was a big, big move. Originally, it was Ubuntu's parent company Canonical that brought Flutter to Linux working alongside Google and now we get this. Honestly, I have mixed reactions here. A little bit of very good and a little bit of not so good. Taking a look at the installer itself, it looks super polished. It's clean, minimal and has that touch of polish. You can see how the button reacts to clicks. Now this is Flutter magic. This will be the first Flutter on Linux experience for many people. There are these subtle animations, smooth transitions and just great UI elements. Flutter is a phenomenal UI toolkit for building beautiful experiences on Android, iOS, desktop, watches, TV, web and so much more. But the installer is still very buggy and this bugs me. This new installer is working for many people but few people are facing issues. I hope this will be fully solved in the final release. The new installer is visually an upgrade but functionally it's very similar to the old one and it's fairly simple to work with. I appreciate this simplicity. It uses Ubuntu's new SUbiquity Enterprise installer as the backend. As I said, some people have reported bugs with this new installer so yeah, it needs a little bit polishing up. This new installer is a big show of commitment towards Flutter and honestly, I'm very hyped for this. I did see many Linux YouTubers and bloggers downplay Flutter for Linux like they downplay every new thing. But as someone who has actually worked with Flutter, I can say this move by Ubuntu is going to be a huge service to the app ecosystem on not just Ubuntu but on desktop Linux as well. We are already seeing many software vendors porting over their Flutter apps to desktop Linux and it's only going to get better. Hey, it's just the beginning. Moving on, we get the newest GNOME that is GNOME 44 here. Now GNOME 44 is bullish on improvements. Along with polishing touches here and there, we also get big improvements in the settings app, file manager and quick settings. The mouse and touchpad settings panel has been reworked with the addition of videos that demonstrate the different available options. Before we just had a switcher which really didn't provide any information. But now you know what exactly these settings do. Along with mouse speed control, you can also turn on the mouse acceleration on and off. Mostly leaving this is the best thing but in some rare cases, some might need to turn it off for finer control. Now you can do that here. The sound settings have been upgraded to make them easier to use. Some of you might have even felt that this panel was a bit crowded, so settings are more organized here now. You can see how the old sound panel had ton of sliders. The new one looks cleaner. Volume level controls have been moved into a separate window making the more commonly used output and input controls easier to access and fine tuning the sound a layer deeper. It is now possible to disable the alert sounds and a new alert sound window makes it easy to browse and select the alert sounds. Accessibility settings get a complete redesign. Again, all the crowded settings here have been nicely organized in a consumable manner. I really like the new design. With these little logos and clean design, I feel that accessibility settings here are going to be more accessible. And now, people will know what all options are available for their particular needs. Great job here. Now, you can quickly share Wi-Fi connections to your smartphones by scanning a QR code. A unique QR code is generated for all Wi-Fi connections that are logged into on your computer. All you have to do is scan this QR and you'll be logged into the network. No need to search for Wi-Fi, no need to type in the password, none of that. And if you're still doing that, 2013 calls, they want you back. Yeah, we don't do pigeon letters anymore either. This is a cool little feature and I don't have to let everybody know how much I love Linux Torvalds every time I share my Wi-Fi password. Talking about 2013, a feature that should have been implemented in 2013 is finally here. When uploading files, we only had a list view up until now and we didn't have a thumbnail view. 
Now I'm a YouTuber and I upload a lot of files regularly. It was really hard selecting the right files or images from this list as you have to distinguish the files using only the file name and you didn't get an idea of what the content actually is. And that was one of the reasons why I uploaded content so infrequently. I couldn't find the FN files. Now that GNOME developers have fixed this, expect more content from Linux Techs and make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications to catch all my videos. Ubuntu 23.04 also introduces a spicy new flavor. Everybody's favorite Cinnamon Desktop is now available on Ubuntu officially. Ubuntu Cinnamon is the newest member of the Ubuntu family and it comes with Linux Mint's flagship Cinnamon Desktop Environment. Ubuntu flavors are variants of Ubuntu which are available with other desktops like KD Plasma, XFC, Budgie and a lot more. This allows you to have a UI version that you resonate with, all while getting that official stability and you don't have to mess around with things while installing these desktops manually. Ubuntu Cinnamon ships with Ubuntu's own Yaru theme and looks very different from Linux Mint, but it's very polished and looks good. It gives us Nemo File Manager, but apart from that, all Linux Mint apps are absent here and will be replaced by GNOME apps. Even the software store is replaced here. Now there are people wondering where Ubuntu Cinnamon will fit while we already have Linux Mint which is technically Cinnamon on top of Ubuntu Base as well. To answer this, Linux Mint is more than Cinnamon on top of Ubuntu Base. Linux Mint has its own philosophy that drives a unique experience that frankly is very different from that of Ubuntu's. Ubuntu Cinnamon on the other hand will give you exactly what it states, a full Ubuntu experience with Cinnamon desktop. I'll definitely do a video on this topic particularly. For now, it's interesting how both these will coexist and evolve. Moving on, the quick settings have also received improvements. The new Bluetooth quick setting button now shows you a list of connected devices and lets you connect or disconnect devices quickly here. This is just great work as this is something that will be very useful in today's wireless era. We use Bluetooth earphones, speakers, mouse, keyboard and stuff. Now it will be more convenient to manage these. We don't want the wrong sounds coming out of the wrong speakers now, do we? This quick menu now also shows applications that are running in the background without any windows. Linux Mint had recently launched a similar functionality and allowed it. Now if applications like messengers, media players and other applications, if they are running in the background, you'll be able to see them here and also close them directly from here. While on Linux, background apps are generally not a problem like they are on Windows because Linux apps are built with better ethics. Still, it's good to see this option here as it's going to increase both the transparency as well as your control over your system. The file manager here has also been upgraded to the latest version. When using the file manager in list view, you can now expand directories or folders. While double clicking on a folder will open it up for you, you can also do this for quick navigation. This is a great feature to have. Now this is not something that everybody needs, nor everybody will use. This feature will be mostly used by programmers, so this feature has been made optional. You can jump into the file's preferences and turn it on or off. This is a nice touch to the file manager as it will quickly let me get an overview of my projects. The icons in the Ubuntu dock will now display badges with numbers to inform you of any new notifications. This dock is the central control element of Ubuntu desktop and it's very useful with multiple users. Now the same dock will also give you a quick overview of which applications need your attention. Your messengers, work applications will display a badge with a number on it. Using these, you'll be able to catch up on any processes that are finished running, messages and any important events. This is a great new addition, as I myself always keep many tasks running and minimize applications. I'm compiling applications, rendering videos, downloading stuff and running long commands. Now I don't have to open up each individual application to check the progress. I just have to check the apps that have a badge. This feature feels like a small update but it will be amazing for productivity once more applications implement it fully. Ubuntu 23.04 is powered by the Linux kernel version 6.2 which is an important update. While this version comes with many improvements and support for additional hardware, I want to touch upon a few big ones. Firstly, this kernel brings mainline support for Apple M1, M1 Pro, Max and Ultra SoCs. While Asahi Linux kernel remains the most suited for Apple Silicon hardware at the moment, this is still a major step forward. Apple Silicon hardware are impressive architecturally and even performance wise. Asahi Linux has already demonstrated impressive performance with still a long way to go. So the inclusion of mainline support for M1 lineup of SoCs makes the future look optimistic. Linux 6.2 also brings ZSTD compression version 1.5 here. This is an update after almost a year now. This makes system much faster to boot. 
I remember when Fedora first implemented ZSTD on BTRFS a couple of versions ago and it did wonders for the boot speed and even app launch speeds there. So yeah, excited for the update here. With the 23.04 version, Ubuntu flavors will not come with Flatpak installed and enabled out of the box. While the main Ubuntu never shipped with Flatpak enabled out of the box, some of the flavors did. Now they have been asked to skip Flatpak and only enable snaps and .deb repositories. This is done to provide a more uniform experience across all the Ubuntu flavors. Ubuntu wants to define what Ubuntu experience is in more clearer terms and without foreign elements, hence this decision. But I wouldn't read too much into this as Flatpak remains available in the official Ubuntu repositories and you can install it using a single command. Now this is very important. Ubuntu is not trying to control what you can do with your system and what you cannot. No, it just wants the out-of-box experience across the entire Ubuntu lineup to be similar. I'm perfectly fine with this as long as I can install and use Flatpaks without any issues. Also, Ubuntu doesn't want to give the wrong impression that Flatpak is officially supported on Ubuntu by giving it out of the box. The new Ubuntu also brings an updated set of applications. All the applications in the Ubuntu software repositories are versioned up. The LTS versions are relatively conservative with package updates, but these interim releases always bring the newer, exciting stuff. So you'll be getting more features, better performance, and overall a much more enjoyable experience. So if you want to be on the newer side of tech, Ubuntu 23.04 is the way to go. All in all, the new Ubuntu 23.04 Lunar Lobster is a release that packs a punch. Impressive improvements and many exciting new things make this new release a big deal. Ubuntu takes big steps towards new trends and future directions with these interim releases. This release has that clear aim towards a future that will be written with Flutter. Flutter is very impressive, and I strongly believe that it can be that missing key in making desktop Linux mainstream. As I said, we are already seeing software developers porting over their Flutter apps to Linux, and this number is only going to get bigger. Apart from Flutter, Ubuntu also improves its visuals and incorporates the upstream updates from GNOME. Ubuntu 23.04 Stable will be available on 20th April and it will be an easy recommendation for Linux enthusiasts. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. Next up, check out 2023's hottest Linux distros. I've got 7 Linux distributions there that you definitely need to check out. This is Linux Techs, signing out.